here on CP24 Breakfast. Let's welcome in Sirius XM host Steve Coolius for a mid-season Leaf report card and a sort of temperature check on Team Canada, two games into the prelim round at the World Juniors out east. Steve, good morning. George, good morning. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Let's uh, start with uh, the recency bias. We'll begin with the juniors. Um, talk about uh, their game versus Germany last night, how they performed when you compare and contrast it to that cold shower, the 5-2 opening loss to che Czechia. I guess they got the message. They got the message. The uh, Czechia game, some people think they got too cute if they would execute it on some of those uh, Mike Legs, I call them, or Michigans, yeah. or cross-type goals. It might have been different. Uh, overall, I think that uh, maybe the hockey gods were giving something back after the Mason McTavish save off the goal line against Finland. I know. Um, they, 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 weren't, they weren't on their A game, put it that way. They didn't get great goaltending. Um, and you call it a cold shower. I think it was a bit of a slap in the face and a wake-up call if they thought they were going to just go 7-0 and and win gold. So I think uh, losing um, can be very good at times in hockey at different levels if you bounce back, and they clearly did against Germany. They'll, they'll trounce Austria, and then we'll see what happens on New Year's Eve. Conor Bedard was great once again. I thought he was the best player even in the loss against Czechia. Yeah, but they were too loose, too sloppy, George, in their opening game. Uh, as, as we said earlier, they did get the message, and let's see what happens once we get to the final round robin game. See, when you look back, it was just a few months ago, right, where they won in Edmonton with that uh, you know cavernous uh, uh, Rogers place. Uh, the empty rink, of course, because of COVID. So you've got smaller packed arenas here versus that empty silence in Edmonton. Uh, is that advantage Canada? Absolutely. Let's be honest that when we play World Juniors in many other parts of the world and the United States, unless they're on a border town, the rinks aren't full. They're, they're, they're never full. They'll be full in Buffalo. They were full in North Dakota. But that's because <laughs> people from Manitoba came down. Once we get back to normalcy, and I think this World Juniors minus Russia is about normalcy, uh, it'll be an advantage when the games get tighter and the competition gets fiercer. Okay. So I think that it is. I go back to Ottawa. I remember that unbelievable play by Ryan Ellis to keep it in. Jordan Everly ties it. John Tavares scores in a shootout. Uh, we've seen so many great World Junior moments awesome. at home. Uh, I think, George, it'll build to that once we get going, slowly and surely. But uh, definitely home ice advantage for Canada at the World Juniors. We've seen it time and time again. All right, let's go pro for a mid-season Leafs report card. Uh, the Buds look pretty balanced as a bunch, a contender. Look, they got 50 points in 35 games, third overall. Uh, let's start in goal. Uh, the big open question was net minding coming into the season. How are 1A Murray and 1B Samsonov performing in your estimation? Great question, George. When they signed Matt Murray, a lot of Leaf fans thought, what the heck are they doing? What about Darcy Kemper? What about Billy Huso? Uh, one went to Washington, of course, the other in Detroit. But I have to be honest, the Leafs are second in the NHL in goals against. If that's not an A, I don't know what is. And I'm a hard marker, George. We we were we had hard teachers in grade 12 and 13. I'm going to say that their goaltending has been an A with what these two guys have done this year. And Eric Schalgren, I have to throw him into the mix. He did a great right. job filling in when the top two guys were hurt. So I got to be honest, I think an A is a fair mark when you're second overall in the league in team defense. Now, look, the big four have found their stroke, but how big a surprise to you is the defense core, especially considering, you know, three of their top four blue liners have been out for most of this run. George, I know they called you to be the 10th defenseman. <laughs> if the injuries kept piling up. And guess what? Morgan Riley's coming back. They were better defensively without Morgan Riley than they were with him. I, I know. It's wild. Right. Yep, right? And, but the power play suffered without him. So when he comes back, I think the power play will settle down. So I think this defense corp that's been next man up from Victor Mete to Connor Timmins, uh, you know, you name it. Uh, Jordy Ben has done a great job as well. Uh, if that's not at least an A minus for what they've had to do filling in, I, I don't know what is. And uh, to be honest, I think that's a bigger shock, George, to me. Agreed. Than the goaltending. Yep. And that's a shock. So right now we got yep. a shock. And we're getting <laughs> shocked this morning. I hope everyone can take it. You're the hockey brain. I want to get you out of here on this. I'm an island around this newsroom, but I continue to say I've always maintained since the beginning of this next generation, that for me, Nylander is the diamond in the rough amongst the big four. I think he has the biggest upside, the high ceiling. I think his two-way game is going to be the long game when the books are written about this generation. I think he's the one. Am I offside? Well, right now, he's making you look very good. Very good. And some people go back to that uh, bailout play against Tampa in the playoffs. 
Um, maybe the final exam, George, is <laughs> in the playoffs. And, and, and this team will only be well, judged sir. on games 83 and beyond. But right now, what Willie is doing, leading the team in goals right there in scoring, playing now with Matthews, which allows Marner to play, who's been fantastic with Tavares. The big four have been sensational up front. And you know what? You might be right. And if that happens, you know what? You'll be front and center at the parade. <laughs> but let's just win a round first, right? That's what people are saying. And George, I know this is it because you're you're, you're too early to retire. <laughs> but I'll guarantee on your retirement that the Leafs finally win a playoff round for George. <laughs> and point. Willie scores the, the series winning goals. Oh, uh, Steve. Hockey Steve. You know what? I've said it around here. I'm retiring after this show. By the way, you're my final interview after, I'm guessing, about 50,000 uh, live TV interviews I've done over my career in 36 years. Greek to Greek, it's a good thing. And I will come back. I'm calling it now. You can keep the tape. I'm coming back for free to cover the Leafs parade if they win it this year. Either the Leafs or Bills. I'm hoping they both win it. But I like, your, I like the way you think, pal. Hey, Steve, thanks very much. Great stuff. If Heidi Stowe, we got a parting gift, the SiriusXM calendar for you as well. Awesome. Steve Coolius, SiriusXM, thanks very much. Have yourself a great day.